So this is Julia Lant, and we will talk about one particular family member, David Baruch Luzada. Over to you, Julia. Uh, thank you, everybody. Um, and thank you for the organizers. Uh, David Baruch Luzada is a Sephardic ancestor I, I barely knew I had. Amsterdam data brought him to life for me. I'm grateful to the organizers for this chance to extract his story, one of the many which are hidden in my family history website, that one there. Uh, first, some um, biographical notes on myself. Um, I'm a great grandson of Jacob Baruch Lasada, who, who, who inherited Peak House in 1854, which is the origin of the Australian Lusadas. There we are there uh, on the cliffs in Devon, looking towards Amsterdam on the English Channel. The Sidmouth Devon area here is developed by great uncle, Emmanuel Baruch Lasada, uh, one of the first Jews to own land in England. And this is one of the houses uh, which Abigail Green in her current project is uh, studying. I'm a great, great, great grandson of Simon Barrow of Bath. It's his house, uh, which is now taller than when he lived there because it is now a hotel. Uh, Simon Barrow of Bath gave me Pressburg, Goldsmith, Nunes, Nunes and Montefiore ancestry. He also led our branch of the Brooklyn uh, into Christianity. I'm a great, 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 great grandson. Aaron Moses d'Aguilar conducted the Austrian tobacco monopoly for the emperor, named his daughter, the Empress Marie Theresa, for over two decades. Sorry about this chart. I love these charts. My website is full of them. There is uh, Baron d'Aguilar there. The chart shows that the Brooklyn Artists of London became established as respectable marriage partners for new arrivals. Amsterdam data shows the presence of Moses of his prayer before, during, and after his Vienna period. Of course, in England, we only read about his period in London before Vienna and his time and brief retirement in London after Vienna. I'm the great, 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 great grandson of Aaron Baruch Lasada, the first Baruch Lasada of Barbados, who got there in 1659. That's the uh, former synagogue in Bridgetown, Barbados, now a museum visited by my third cousin, Peter Lusado, in 2016. And the final very important biographical note, I met Tom Teal in, I believe, Tom in 2013. This photograph shows us at the Mohammed's meeting room in the Portuguese synagogue in uh, Amsterdam. Tom is the tall person in the mirror there, and I'm the one with the camera. Uh, first, uh, a disclaimer of sorts. There are many famous Safari. Uh, educated people have heard of Baruch Spinoza, David Ricardo, Benjamin Israeli, Pierre Montes France. All of you have heard of a lot of the famous people I've come across. For example, Isaac Abravanel, the uh, statesman and philosopher, David Abravanel, who uh, led the resettlement of England, Louis Torres, who sailed with Christopher Columbus, Geronimo Nunes da Costa, the uh, diplomat extraordinaire for the Portuguese crown, Samuel Palash, the Moroccan ambassador and pirate, probably reverse order, the Lopez Suazos, who helped finance the glorious revolution, Ephraim Bueno, who was painted by Rembrandt, the Pintos and their in-laws, the Israel Pereiras, their Madrid in-law, Fernando Montezinos, and his business associates, uh, the Lamegos of Rouen, the early and late Nassis, and especially after last week, Sir Moses Montefiore, who raised a lot of finance for slaveholder compensation upon the uh, abolition of slavery in the, in the British Empire. Unfortunately, nobody's heard of David Brooke Lusada, but hopefully his modest life illustrates some workings of the Sephardic diaspora. I'll cover very briefly the scope of his life. 
carriages, community engagement, trade and international links, and his commitment to uh, family. He was born in 1640 uh, in Livorno. This is halfway through the uh, 1540 to 1740 period that Jonathan Israel suggests that we're the apex of the influence of the Sephardic diaspora in the Atlantic. I think what this shows is that the Brooklyn were very much followers. They appeared in the Atlantic uh, as Jews uh, and not uh, as part of the uh, Christian Portuguese penetration of Iberian trade in the uh, Atlantic in the previous century. He was uh, in the Nise, which is a particular form of nationalization, uh, naturalization in Barbados in 1664. And he was the first Brooklyn in English colonial trade. And he arrived in Amsterdam in 1672. He did revisit Barbados in 1680 and 1696. Livorno, uh, I did visit Livorno in 2013, but uh, most of my uh, most of what are valuable things I've learned uh, about Livorno have come from the recent work by, of uh, Alain Najar et al. This is not my photograph of Livorno, but it shows um, for those who want to visit that the railway station is a long way from the port. So if you're dragging a suitcase as I did, you're better off catching a bus or a taxi. You can also see uh, just below the centre and slightly on the left the beginning of the, of the canal, which leads from the port the Venetian Quarter where the Jewish merchants had their houses. Two obvious questions here. Where in Iberia did David's parents come from to get to Livorno around 1640? Where did David travel from in order to get to Barbados around 1664? Unfortunately, I can't prove the answers, but uh, it seems to me likely that uh, they arrived uh, they left Madrid on the way to Livorno. David himself probably left for Barbados from France, probably wrong. Uh, in Amsterdam, the, the synagogue tax data shows when the family arrived there. Firstly, we have uh, Moses Brook Lasada, well known in English Jewish history. Uh, he was there in those years. Uh, he, he, he wasn't a permanent resident, I don't think he didn't pay the finter, and he wasn't a big trader, didn't pay the imposter. He paid the Palomasa, which is a general donation, probably visiting from France and then from England, where he arrived in 1660 from France. In 1662, his father, Isaac, brother Solomon, and stepbrother Jacob arrive in, in um, Amsterdam, Jacob from London. In 1672, David arrives and becomes the family's largest imposter payer after Jacob died in 1681. Up to 1714, there are visits from London from the London brother, Abraham Baruch Lasada, who was a cousin, German, which means brother, siblings were parents of Abraham Israel, Israel Pereira. And this, um, this was a new sort of discovery and, and, and a significant family connection, which was revealed in the will of Jacob Israel Pereira, a connection which probably explains why Moses Baruch Lusada, who was somewhat unknown, became prominent in the resettlement of Jews in England. Of course, Jacob Israel Pereira is well known in various quarters, but particularly because he was a major military contractor for William of Orange, both before and after William of Orange became King of England. Another obvious question is why did the family only arrive in Amsterdam after its arrival in Barbados and after its arrival in England? Because we, uh, we all know that Amsterdam during David's life was the main northern center of Jewish Atlantic trade and was therefore key to the development of the Barbados sugar trade. The Barbados option uh, arose as a result of the loss of Dutch Brazil and um, uh, the early, the, the, some of the earliest uh, Brazil Jews to get to Barbados were the Mercados, who in uh, 1655 got a pass from Cromwell, and in late 1665 they um, actually got to Barbados. Possibly what happened was this, and this is a conjecture. 
Aaron, that because Aaron and Abraham were plantation owners in Barbados for a period, uh, and um, uh, the Mercado, uh, Mercado and Baruch Lasada marriages suggest a formal link took Aaron to Barbados to support the Mercados and create a dowry. Sister Gracia married David Raphael de Mercado, who died in Barbados in 1685. And Daniel uh, Mercado, who was born in Genoa in uh, 1659, married uh, Sarah de uh, Baruch Lasada in Amsterdam in 1683. David's Indonization in 1664 was followed by that of Abraham in 1672, Aaron and Moses in 1675, and Jacob in 1687. That is, David led the family into the Barbados trade under the Navigation Acts. But he himself may have learned from David Raphael de Mercado, who was Indonized in 1661. There's possibly a lot more to, to learn about this, but that's my current thinking. David's marriages, uh, three marriages, were to ex-Madrid families, and to my mind, they seem quite businesslike. The first one was to uh, Hannah Montezinos, who was a widow, a widow and um, for somebody uh, ambitious with no money, marrying a widow can be a good option. Unfortunately, that marriage did not last long for, before we find David then marrying Esther Rodrigue da Costa, uh, uh, a marriage recorded in Amsterdam in uh, 1673. I was staggered to uh, observe the name of the David's uh, witness, Jacob Montezinos, and I thought David must be an absolutely wonderful person that uh, the ex-father-in-law uh, is so keen to ensure his uh, future happiness that he's prepared to assist the next marriage. Perhaps though what happened was that um, the, the dowry from the first uh, marriage possibly had to be repaid in part and possibly the marriage witness um, is there to ensure that some of the second dowry flows through in payment repayment of the debt on the first. And amazingly enough, David next marriage to Rachel Levy Gomez in 1677, we find that his witness there is his brother-in-law from his second marriage. And uh, possibly the same thing happened there that some of the third dowry went to repay the debt on the second. There's possibly more to learn here as well. These marriages, I think uh, the first probably occurred in France, not certain. The second also occurred in France, uh, noting that the son Isaac was born in 1672, and I think the Amsterdam registration was, was a ratification after the event. The third marriage, uh, I think, was uh, normal. The um, Wonderful Sephardic uh, confraternities or charities uh, are of interest, but here I'm uh, picking up the family links associated with them. Uh, the Abi Yetamin, the cha charity for orphans, uh, David was, a, was, was Gabbai for that. Um, and I note that um, in the, in, uh, uh, an apprentice, uh, say the 12 years with the stockbrokers, Moses recognizes uh, Enrique Ferro who were in-laws, uh, and um, Julia Lieberman's paper on, on this charity uh, covers this example. Dota, um, David had a grand niece, Rebecca Montezinos of, of Livorno, who was a candidate for a grant. David's son, eldest son, Isaac, was also on Dota after Isaac died. Before Isaac, uh, took up this community duty. He was Parnas of Burials in Curacao in uh, 1702 and later in Curacao, Isaac's son, David, David's grandson took up the same duty in 1731. David was the of this Terra Santa uh, charity. He may have first learned of this charity when he was a boy in Livorno for their relative received grants. Finally, a brother, Solomon, is a member of the Etzheim uh, school, uh, and he's the only Baruch Lassada name I can find on displayed on a wall in Amsterdam. Tom does tell me though that he uh, that Solomon was a custodian of Bethlehem. In trade, um, I have not studied this in detail, but clearly Barbados was um, a mainstay of the family's trade uh, in this period, six, uh, 1659 to 1699. A commercial bill uh, originating in Boston does appear in the, in the Amsterdam notary records. 
I'll mention this a little later. Moses brought Rosado in London, was there to facilitate the Barbados trade, which he did in several ways that I know of. Firstly, in connection with the 1664 petition by malicious rival merchants, which thanks to King Charles II, uh, a document was issued uh, confirming the Jewish rights and presence in England. This is the first time in actual fact a document was created legitimizing the Jewish presence in England. And uh, in 1680, there was a well-known um, customs battle resulting from the uh, non-unloading of the ship experiment in Falmouth, and the customs agent lost his job over the dispute. Uh, finally, there is a document in Amsterdam uh, showing David Brooklyn's involvement in the Martinique cargo. The person who drew this to my attention is Fernando Gonzalez del Capo Roman, the man who found out for us Villaflor and Madrid connection, uh, origin of Abraham Israel Pereira. This is a shot of Bevis Mark Synagogue in London, uh, consecrated in 1701, which unfortunately for Moses Brooke Lasada was after he died. And Moses Brooke Lasada, as, as mentioned, was prominent in the resettlement and elected first guy in uh, 1663. David had two sons. Uh, his first son married a cousin in, in 1696. She was Rebecca, the daughter of Jacob Brooke Lasada. And a marriage, I think, was perhaps anticipated when in uh, 1694, David bought 50% of the house, Isle of Barbados, from Jacob's widow. I think here, some of the money would have flown back as the dowry. So David's cash outlay wouldn't have been so serious. The house was in Swannenberger Strat, which in, might have looked like this. In Amsterdam. That street no I longer presume. exists because uh, there's a large music uh, concert theater on the site. Mm -hmm. uh, David's second son, Solomon, uh, married a cousin uh, in 1709. She was the daughter of Moses Brutal Sard of London. Solomon bought a house in Amsterdam in 1709, but his two sons were the last Brutal Sardas of Amsterdam. In 1691, David published a sermon book to commemorate the coming of age of his sons, Isaac and Solomon. Here is the sermon book here, which is actually uploaded to my website. There are dates in here which give you uh, an idea of when Isaac and Solomon were born. Uh, and um, they were at least 13, <laughs> at the dates of the sermon. In Barbados, uh, David had numerous relatives. Um, his stepbrother Aaron married late in life. David's younger brother Abraham replaced David in Barbados when, when David went to Amsterdam. And then David's stepson Jacob stayed on to replace Abraham. So there were always two um, males uh, in Barbados representing the families end of the business there. His Barbados daughter Rebecca um, married um, a Curacao man uh, and left many descendants. When she died in Curacao, the husband actually moved to uh, Amsterdam. And uh, David's widowed sister, Gracia de Mercado, managed, was a remarkable woman. She managed her husband's business after he died. And then um, uh, after Aaron died, uh, she managed his business as well, uh, but then later retired and lived out her life as Gracie did the series uh, of, of Curacao. Uh, not my photograph, but uh, a wonderful shot of the interior of the Mikva Israel synagogue in uh, Curacao with, with the sand floor. In Amsterdam, there are some traces of uh, David's uh, uh, relationships with his family. In 1686, he paid for a condition to be said on his mother Luna's death, and also to commemorate his stepbrother Jacob's death in 1681. Uh, in 1699, just before he died, uh, he negotiated a family settlement to resolve a long standing family dispute raised by stepbrother um, Aaron in Barbados in 1685. And in this uh, settlement, uh, Aaron's interests were represented by the brother in law, Isaac Gomez and Rex from London. This um, family settlement uh, was a, is a sort of document which uh, family historians love because um, 
it showed that, uh, in fact, David had two brothers named Moses. This can be very confusing, of course. Um, they were different cohorts of brothers. Um, the younger brother Moses of, of Curacao, in fact, he, was, he appears in the literature doing missions for the WIC, West Indian Company, out of Curacao. Um, and he says it is to be distinguished from the, from the, um, uh, the well known Moses Brook, the South of London who by the time of his family settlement was actually deceased. Uh, through his son, Isaac, David was the ancestor of the enduring Baruch Lusada line of Suriname, and consequently the current Lusadas of Leiden. And his great, great grandson, David, was a harm uh, uh, and quite well known uh, at Jordan Savan. Jordan Savan in Suriname, it's painted by Benoit here, uh, was arguably a, a Jewish paradise uh, in, in South America. Currently, uh, David Wilkelsado figures in um, my work. Um, he is linked through um, that 1674 um, commercial bill to a Daniel Wilkelsado of Boston. I believe Dan Daniel is the probable ancestor of the vast number of US Western Lusadas, spelt in a bewildering variety of ways. And in this project, uh, assuming we can find a male line um, Lusada, uh, we hope to, to use Adam Brown's Y-DNA projects to help us uh, work out the, the ancestry. I don't believe David is, however, the ancestor of the Lusadas of New England, who appear to descend um, uh, from Portugal by London. And I note that one of these Lusadas also married a widow named Hannah, about whom Laura Arnold Liebman recently beautifully wrote. And what is our Portuguese connection? The name, I think, was probably acquired from the town of Lusada, also spelled with a Z in northern Portugal. Vinhais, uh, Braganza, and Villa Flor are also relevant. Here I am in about 2003 in the town hall in Lusada. The family stay in Portugal was perhaps 100 years. But our Portuguese identity seems to survive a return to Spain and then yet another exit from Spain. This man, Hans Lusada, also visited Lusada about 50 years before I did. He is a descendant of David Brook Lusada and the father and grandfather of the Leiden Lusadas. He's a fascinating man. Perhaps there's another story to tell here. He was born in Indonesia, died in Madrid. He was an anti Nazi journalist before World War II, escaped in a commandeered fishing boat from Scheveningen, was rescued by the British Navy, again rescued by the British Navy when taking his family in a small boat to Portugal, and became a senior executive. KLM without having been a pilot. And as I say, I think there's quite a lot that could be said about this rather remarkable Lusada. So resuming uh, David Baruch Lusada's life, he appears to have entered the Jewish faith as a boy in Bavona. He appears to have been dedicated to Jewish life and his family. I don't believe he was super wealthy, but probably not poor left many descendants. He had no apparent political activity or vices. In chess, he would be a pawn and not a major piece. But perhaps he, we could say he was a model Amsterdam Sephardic too. And he died in 1699 and um, was interred at Beth Hayim. And uh, I couldn't resist that lovely uh, painting of uh, my uh, like a boy's doll who uh, painted this, of course, before David died. And that uh, concludes the, uh, the presentation. Uh, thank, you. thank you. Can I um, ask a question? I'm afraid it's a question I, I, I always ask. The, the, the earlier history, you mentioned um, uh, Vinaish and just the general sort of northeast of uh, Portugal, so Trazas Monches. Do you, do you have any evidence of, of where the family might have uh, 
might have come from? Um, not uh, going back to Spain, uh, there is a uh, there is a um, uh, an unsubstantiated uh, comment by um, a, a, a gallery note of the Jamaican brutalist artists that they originally came from Granada, but uh, there's no evidence. Uh, the only evidence I do have is um, an inferred um, link with the Lusadas who are um, uh, questioned, imprisoned by the Coimbra Inquisition, um, firstly around 15, 1881, and then around 1650, several lots of Lusadas were imprisoned and uh, interrogated. And whilst I can't um, absolutely uh, identify the children of the uh, Amador de Lusada, who was imprisoned in 1580, with the succeeding uh, children uh, who appear in the records. Uh, I've made some inferences as to um, what their connection with Amador de Lusada is. Yeah, yeah. Um, can I can I just um, also say welcome to um, everybody who is on um, Facebook? I can see um, Luca and uh, Michael and Judith and um, others. So very welcome. And if people on Facebook have any questions, just type them there and we shall be um, happy to ask. Um, Ton, um, with you. Yeah, there was a discussion in the chat of, about endonize. Uh, what does it mean? And it was answered in chat. It's a, a sort of a naturalization. Um, where did you find the endonization of uh, Dev Baruch Lusada? Where in the um, or in the there's archive? several. Uh, there, uh, Wilfred Samuel um, has uh, has a, created a, a, a it's basically a reference document in the Jewish Historical Society of England um, transactions, and um, uh, you will find uh, that list there uh, of, of those endonized. Um, uh, Indianization could be done by the governor in Barbados. Uh, there's some confusion about um, whether Indianization has occurred in, England, in London or in Barbados, but up to 1702, Indianization was done by the governor in Barbados and registered in England. Uh, Indianization is different to national naturalization, which required an act of parliament, but Indianization was readily done by the governor and uh, uh, yes. Um. There was a question about uh, Benjamin Disraeli. Why do you say that he is only part Sephardic? He was a member uh, of the Sephardic community in uh, Bevis Marx and his father as well. Uh, th 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 because he's an Italian Jewish origin, it's, um, it's not altogether clear how Sephardic he was, but certainly he had some Sephardic um, uh, ancestry. And um, so, um, it's like with the Montefiore case, um, there is a little bit of controversy about precisely how Sephardic they were. So um, I'm trying to be, uh, shall we say, uh, academically respectable here, Tom. Mm -hmm. No, no, that's fair. Um, then there was a, a remark about the Nide Israel Synagogue in Barbados. It's not a museum. The mu museum is on, on the other side of the street. Oh, is that right? Uh, uh, the Nida Israel synagogue is a functioning synagogue, it says here. I don't know about that. I thought there were uh, no congregants uh, left on Barbados. No, no, and Maybe. all the documents are, documents are in London and so on. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, the archives of uh, the Jewish community of Barbados are in London. Yeah. Uh, part of the Bevis Marx archives. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned uh, tax registers in Amsterdam. Can you tell something about them? And um, why are they um, important for family research? Well, oh, for me, um, the record of taxes paid to the synagogue are. Um, uh, very simply here, you can see that they can tell you when um, when people appeared in Amsterdam. Um, and for me, this was um, this was quite. I mean, this gives you this gives you a little bit of texture and enables you to see the order in which things happen. So, um, 
It's one of those uh, uh, tr little treasures for family historians, I think. Um, then there are some, there's a question from Franz, Francis Rifkin. Uh, what were the cultural interests uh, of David Baruch uh, Lusada? <laughs> what were his favorite books, activities, etc.? <laughs> Was he acquainted with William and Mary? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I, I think he was very boring. I think he was a businessman and uh, he, he kept a very straight uh, life. He, he stayed on the rails, I think. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, there's a thank you from Bernard Miller, his family. He is seventh nephews of Leah Salomon Renz and someone else. Um, and he asks, what was David, uh, was David involved in the slave trade or the abolition compensation? Um. Uh, of course, uh, everybody was involved in the slave trade, um, unfortunately. Uh, and and, and I, I must say, every time I have come across uh, family involvement in, uh, well, firstly, uh, Jamaica, but before that, Barbados, uh, 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 naturally, uh, uh, it is a little shocking. Um, and um, and uh, the fact that they, they were involved in the plantation ownership in Barbados early, um, I think is a reflection of what happened in Brazil. So um, many aspects of sugar production from Brazil were transported directly into um, mm -hmm. Barbados. But the Lusatas themselves were not in Brazil, I presume. Correct. Now, as I say, I think they piggybacked on the uh, Mercados. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then there are a few thank yous for your great talk. And uh, um, David, do you have any questions? Um, we, we have a question from, uh, from Paola <laughs> on um, uh, Facebook. Oh, oh, by the way, I can just see that, uh, that Jeremy, who's um, also in Australia, is, 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 is there. So hello, Jeremy. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, she says that she read somewhere about Portuguese synagogues, something about having a bipolar design that differentiates them from other synagogues. I, I think what, what she means by bipolar is, is, is that we sort of face in, whereas the sort of Tudescos and others sort of face, face forward. Um, and I'm not sure if that's just Spanish and Portuguese or other um, varieties of Sephardim do that. I'm not quite sure about Morocco, maybe. Um, but um, but yeah, I mean, that, that is a typical thing of, of, of uh, Portuguese Sephardic synagogues. Anyway, we, we look, um, we, we, we sit facing in towards each other. Mm. Um, at the beginning, uh, Julie, Julian, you mentioned that you were researching other families, uh, other ancestors and I mean within the Sephardic world this 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 story of of, of David Baruch Lazada is is quite um typical almost um do, do do you have that on any other sort of non-Sephardic lines that people at that time are zipping all over the, the world because perhaps we 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 rather take it for granted that this is what um what our ancestors were doing and perhaps others others were not um, uh, David, I think, um, I mean, my, my reading, uh, my background reading uh, has been very much a, a, one of catching up with the uh, history of the Sephardic diaspora in the Atlantic, which, which mirrored uh, and it will extend, extends uh, what networks were in the Mediterranean, but, but, but mirrored the um, trade networks uh, there, uh, but also of the um, uh, Huguenots um, uh, uh, and 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 other uh, other Quakers uh, and other family-based networks. So uh, I've read the Sephardic diaspora literature as sort of catching up with um, uh, 
with other literatures that already existed. So, so in, in a sense, my reading has all been in the context of um, of the Sephardic uh, history catching up with um, uh, history of other networks. But it's fairly recent, though, and um, it's, it's actually quite exciting reading the, um, the way the Sephardic history, uh, Sephardic diaspora history, uh, has evolved over the last uh, twenty years. So it's, it's a fresh, new, and exciting sort of field, I think. Yeah, I, th I think we're, we're just sort of, there's so many um, archives that are, are, are coming to, to light. Um, first of all, for Western Sephardic, but I think also for, for Eastern Sephardic within the sort of Ottoman Empire and, and, and countries um, around there. And we're beginning to be able to sort of integrate um, people together. Um, we have another um, question on Facebook from uh, Peter. Uh, his family interest is Lealtad, Lealta, Livorno, Amsterdam, London. Um, and he noticed that there was a, a Lealtad in Barbados, uh, but not in Jewish context. Um, obviously, for uh, Livorno, we now have that beautiful um, book on, um, on Ketubot. Um, and um, what else to say? I mean, the, the, when they when this uh, current plague ends, you can go and visit the um, the Bevis Marks and the uh, Barbados archives in um, London. And actually, I should mention that a friend of mine was the the person who um, restored the uh, cemetery um, in Barbados. Um, he's when last heard of, he was built, rebuilding his house, he's a stonemason, he was last heard of, he was, he was rebuilding his house in um, Greece, but I know he has records which are not in the public domain, so we can um, perhaps um, add that. Um, we have a confirmation uh, from Simon Greintler that the Nieder Israel synagogue is still in use. Ah. Uh, but it, it, doesn't, it doesn't follow the Spanish and Portuguese minimum. No. Hmm. But it functions, still functions. That's something. Well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and there was another family member, uh, Randy Schoenberg, and he is connected to Bella Bar Barrow, who was first married to oh, Mrs. Yes. Baruch Lusada, and then yes. to Samuel Lyon der Simons. He's a distant relative. He, he may be, we may be related in several ways. Mm -hmm. And um, then you mentioned Baron the Aguilar. Maybe you can say a little bit more about him. I, I think it's very interesting. Uh, uh, and I very think so. uh, yes, Colin, he's very interesting. And uh, um, Abigail, Abigail Green told me that there was a colleague at Oxford who was writing a biography of, of, uh, of Baron uh, Daguilar, but it, this biography is slow to uh, appear. And last time I communicated with the author, the prospective author, he told me that there will be several articles, not a, not a complete biography. So I'm not sure what those plans, where those plans are, but certainly there is a need for a, uh, I think, a biography of uh, Baron mm -hmm. Daguilar. He's, he's the most extraordinary uh, Sephardic Jew, I think. Yeah. Is, isn't Randy related to Baron Aguiar as well? I think Randy um, related to everybody, I think. So. Um, uh, not that I know of, but uh, there, may be, there may be connections through, uh, well, there's connections through the Lusadas. <laughs> um, did, you, did you say whether the Lusada have, have done a, um, a Y-DNA test? Have you sort of found a, a male um, Lusada to, to corner? Yes, um, uh, some of our some of our male line Lusadas participated in uh, in Adam Brown and Michael Glass's uh, study. Um, of course, finding male line uh, ancestors of any family, whether Lusadas or others, is actually uh, difficult because sometimes the family name uh, switches from to the female line because people want to keep the uh, the name, and so. Uh, Sometimes male line was uh, male line relatives aren't in fact male line, um, but uh, yes, um, we do have some, and we do, we participated, and I think um, it, it may be helpful for, for the future also. Do, do do you know what the sort of origin 
was. I mean, my 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 family is a bog standard Iberian goat herd, but um, are they are they the same, or are they from you know the Middle East or somewhere more interesting? Or... Um, well, um, Fernando tells me that uh, my ancestors in uh, Portugal in Portugal were, 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 were shoemakers, but he said that this is actually a respectable profession. It's not aristocratic, but it's actually fairly uh, elevated socially. It's not as not, not like you might think today. So, so the best I can do for the Losadas is um, is uh, shoemaking. But of course, the Losadas were very good at marrying uh, people with money, and um, and so the marriages with the Israel Pereiras. In fact, the Israel Pereiras in turn married into money with the Fernando Montezinos and that family, and. Uh, and also the De Pintos, so um, so um, so it, it was possible to socially elevate uh, through marriage. I think. Yeah. Um, we have another question on on Facebook from Paula. Oh dear. Um, what what are the chances of Sephardic Jews um, when they cross the Atlantic to the New World of adopting Ashkenazi ways of davening and custom uh, and customs? Absolutely zero. <laughs> Please, please go and wash out your mouth with soap and water. A terrible, <laughs> terrible um, no, I, I mean, anyway, um, the, the, the Ashkenazim wouldn't, um, for the most part, wouldn't have followed for um, a long time, uh, a long time afterwards. Uh, Daniel is raising his hand. If you like, I'll, I'll unmute you if you want. Um, I think you can unmute yourself, Daniel. You there, Daniel? Uh, um, Daniel, you have to unmute yourself. Oh, oh, he hit the wrong button. Do you, Daniel, do you want to try again or to type your question? Uh, let me find Daniel. You should be able to unmute if you want, Daniel. Okay, so, okay, I beg, your, I beg your pardon, this question was answered. Okay, I beg your pardon. Um, so, um, shall we, uh, shall we wind up then? Yes. Great, let me, um, uh, Randy's saying the barrows originally are uh, Baroque, and I'm oh, sorry, I lost uh, uh, the barrows originally are Baruch and also in Barbados. Has anyone co connected the barrows to the Baruch Luz Luzada? <laughs> um, uh, the answer is sort of. Uh, the, the, the barrows certainly believe they have Baruch Luzada ancestry. Um, I think this must have come from Livorno, but. Uh, I thought so, but the, the marriage contracts don't appear in a French recent French book. So those marriages occurred in Italy somewhere other than Livorno. But uh, so I, I don't know exactly, but certainly the Barrows believe they have Baruch Lusada ancestry. Okay. Can I ask you to um, cease, uh, cease screen sharing? Okay. And um, I can try and uh, screen share myself, which always normally ends in disaster. Um, so, Ton, um, your uh, Dutch naming is, is better than me. Would you like to? Yes. Um, next week, we have a double presentation. Now, one of them is from Esther Shaya. She wrote uh, recently wrote a biography about Henriette Pimentel. She was a director of a children's home next to the Hollandse Schouwburg. And the Hollandse Schouwburg was uh, a place in Amsterdam where Jews were uh, driven together before they uh, were uh, moved out to Westerbork and from there to, to Poland. And uh, children were smuggled out 
of the Hollandse Schouwburg to the children's home led by Henriette Pimentel. And in this way, she was able to save 600 children. Uh, Fokko Weerstra will tell about the broader picture and about the brothers and sisters of uh, Henriette and their fate in World War II. But he will also tell something about the family history in general. And uh, we would. Uh, could, I, could I just quickly? Um, so I'm not sure where those lines are coming from, and that's me or somebody else. Um, just, just to say that um, if any of um, our attendees have a um, subject um, that they um, are keen to talk about at some future date, we'd be very happy to. Um, to receive suggestions. Um, I'm particularly interested in seeing if we can find somebody who can talk to us um, about Freemasonry, both in the um, English and uh, uh, the uh, French varieties. Um, and, um, but if anybody has, um, like Julian, um, done some detailed family research, it's always interesting to, to hear a, a family story. So um, Tom, Tom, sorry, back to you. So uh, that's it for to uh, for tonight. Um, a happy new year again, everyone, and we hope to see you next week. Great, right. thank you, thank you, everyone, and uh, thank you, thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>